Hey guys, Rob Keen, your host of the Freedom Report. This is going to be your Precious Metals Report for Friday, uh, September 20th, 2024. Uh, a day late because we had some family time yesterday, so I'm going to pop this out and release it early in the afternoon as an instant premiere. And we're going to do a little bit shorter report than we normally do. We're just going to focus on some stories around gold and silver showing that the London market may be in stress on both metals. Then we're going to show you the COT report showing what all the players are doing in the market and why the price is moving like it is. And that's really all the data that you need to see this week. And we're going to go right into it. Keep this report short and sweet before the weekend. Here we go. Thank you to uh, David Jensen on his Substack. We're talking about what's going on in London. We're going to start with silver. Then we will go to gold. Get myself all moved around here. And here we go. London flow to vaulted silver drawn down by 8.1% in August of 2024. This came out on September 11th. Uh, his quote here from Yogi Berra, you can observe a lot just by watching. There you go. Uh, the analysis of the London Bullion Market Association data indicates that London lo uh, silver market, the world's largest fiscal silver trading market, has an open interest of total standing claims of between $4.3 billion and $6.4 billion in the spot cash. And remember on the OTC market, it's over the counter. So there's a certain amount of gold and silver in this market. There are a bunch of claims on top. It's unallocated largely, meaning whatever claim gets in to claim the metal, to grab the metal, the rest of it is just uh, positions on the metal unfulfilled directly to the physical. It's kind of like the derivative market, uh, but it's an unallocated trade market. It says here in the article, when it's noted that these spot claims are for immediate ownership of fiscal metal bars with a total global annual production of silver estimated at 1.003 billion ounces in 2024, with a 265 million ounce supply deficit in 2024, our curiosity is naturally awakened. Recent LBMA data also shows that at August 31, 2024, the total London vault float or vaulted silver not owned by ETFs, meaning not allocated to uh, ETF demand that's already come in, customers own it. So anything other than ETFs, because most of ETFs store the gold and silver in the London market and a couple other places. So the ETF claims a certain amount of that, and the rest of it is up for the OTC market trade. So the data shows that the silver not owned by ETFs stood at 0 0.309 billion ounces or 9,599 tons, which we'll show you a figure on that here in a moment. At July 31, 2024, the total prior silver float in London stood at 0.336 billion ounces or 10,440 tons, a difference of about 841 tons, I believe. This yields a 27 million ounce or 8.1% drawdown of the total London float in the month of August. What does that mean? Well, of the available silver, the float, the one not owned by the ETFs and, and other owners, uh, in August, 8.1% of that got drawn out of London in one month. And it says here, consider that of the 0 0.309 billion ounces in London vaults, the large majority of the London vaulted silver is closely held and not available to the market. It means by other parties already claimed. That's what closely held means. It's private holdings. Generously assuming that even 50% of this vaulted float is available to market leaves a net float in London vaulted silver of 0.155 billion ounces to the market. If the August run rate of draw on the London float were to continue into September and onward, it would not take too many months before this market becomes disrupted. And that will occur before the float goes to zero. Limited fiscal silver and gold holdings in London's vault and the mad paper leverage claims created on these physical bars created uh, with oversight by the Bank of England gives false pricing and gearing that can rapidly lead to default by the bullion banks that have sold these ownership claims for metal bars into the global financial market. So basically what he's saying is if this continued in 12 months, you would be literally out of available physical silver if those same numbers continued, but it would actually default before then because there are so many claims on that metal. There's more paper claims than metal that you actually would have to declare default before you actually ran out of metal because there's so many claims to it. At some point in time, when your percentage of available metal falls below a certain amount on all these paper claims, it goes into default. So it wouldn't even take 12 months. So Breaking all that down for you, maybe five to six months away, if the continued drawdown occurs in London of London running out of silver. Now we'll get to gold here in a moment. Here is an article from Kitco on naturally healing silver. This is just a really cool article I thought I'd walk you through. Um, according to a new study published in Matter, which is just a scientific uh, uh, scientific journal which has different scientific studies, Researchers from the Institute of Physics of the Chinese Academy of Sciences have discovered that silver has the intrinsic capability 
of autonomously self-healing at the nanoscale level. I'm going to sum this article for you. Most metals, including gold, cannot heal themselves unless something is applied like pressure or heat or a chemical change. Silver, apparently, at the nanoparticle level, heals itself with no external stimuli. The concept of self-healing in material science and engineering was inspired by the innate ability of some living organisms to self-heal. But thus far, the focus has generally been on soft materials like polymers and hydrogels. Quote, for solid state metals, one may intuitively imagine that any form of self-healing would be much more difficult to achieve, the Chinese Academy of Sciences said. While a, past, a few past studies have showcased the self-healing behavior of metals that more or less requires the assistance of external triggers, heating, mechanical stimulus, or electron beam irradiation, whether the autonomous self-healing can occur in metal solids without any external intervention remains a curiosity. So they went on this study and showed using a certain type of uh, microscope that uh, silver was self-healing. And it goes here. The authors noted that the ability of silver to autonomously self-heal nanoscale damage at room temperature and blow shows a promising possibility for developing damage tolerant components and devices at the sub micrometer length scale. So in other words, this is another feature of silver that you don't see in any other metal and just makes silver more valuable. And if they can figure out a way to use self-healing silver in all these applications, it's just going to get demanded more. I thought that was super cool. Thank you to one of my readers for sending that story. Another reason to buy silver. Now on to gold. Again, going back to David Jensen, looking at the London gold, gold market. With, physical, with global physical gold demand in quarter two 2024 reported at an all-time high, and quarter two 2024 over the counter physical gold bar delivery and demand in London running now at a multi decade high of 329 tons. Let's look at the status of the London leverage gold market. So, in other words, overall, according to gold trends from uh, the World Gold Council, total gold demand reached its highest quarter two on record. So, no other quarter two in history since I've been keeping these statistics has had as high of gold demand, according to the World Gold Council at gold.org. He notes that, and he also notes that the physical gold bar delivery in London specifically is running at a multi-decade high of 329 tons. So gold's being demanded everywhere, and it's really being demanded in London. The LBMA states in their 2011 local London liquidity survey that daily trading turnover or volume is estimated at 10x the daily net settle clearing volume, the latest daily gold trading volume. In other words, there's 10x claims for all the gold. Assuming 90% of daily trading in London is the cash spot market, total open interest claims of 2x daily trading volume, translates to such and such, such, such. So it goes down to this. Compare the 1,340 tons of gold float, gold available, to the 329 tons drawn down from London market in quarter two. One could assume that three or four quarters from now, they will run out of gold. But remember, on this type of market where you have more paper claims than gold, the OTC market, you don't have to draw all the gold down for it to default because you have so many paper claims. You only have to draw it down to a certain percentage and then they have to declare default because a certain amount of paper claims are always going to draw gold out. So what's essentially happening is all the paper claims are drawing gold faster in London, just like they are across the world. But London, because it's an unallocated market, they don't even have to actually run out of gold for that thing to be in some sort of default because of all the paper claims on that gold. And that's why unallocated gold and silver markets like in London can be dangerous. Gold supply and demand, uh, all the different demand in the report, you can get that there. Uh, oh, I wanted to go over a couple of charts also in the World Gold Council survey. How do you expect your institution's gold reserves to change in the next 12 months? This is a survey of central banks uh, increase in 2024. And not only that, it's gone up. It's now they expected to increase 29%, whereas last year it was 24, 25. So in 2019, it only been 8%. So pre-COVID, uh, the central banks weren't uh, buying as much gold. They were buying gold, but not at that heavy of rate, only 8%. Now they're up to 29%. They've almost quadrupled uh, or a quadrupling of the demand by central banks now than what they had in 2019 prior to COVID. So prior to COVID, the world was thinking it was okay financially. And now financial situation is apparently not as good. And the central banks are buying a lot more gold. They're increasing. So it's gone up. So not only has it gone up since 2008, 2009, we had the crash, but the last five years since uh, the pandemic has, call, has caused the central banks to want to buy more gold. In other words, what do the central banks do when you have any sort of economic issue? They buy more gold. Uh, 
What topics are relevant for your reserve management decisions? Interest rate levels, inflation, geopolitical instability, ESG, shifts in global economic power. So these are the reasons why people are buying gold. And you can see it in this chart. How relevant are the factors in your organization's decision to hold gold? De-dollarization policy, only somewhat at 11%. The biggest one's long-term store of value. That's 42% highly requested by central banks. Performance during times of crisis, 47%. No default risk, 49%. Historical position, 46%. Highly liquid asset, 42%. Serves as a geopolitical diversifier, 30%. Concerns about systemic uh, financial risks, 18%. Uh, political risk, 19%. Valuable collateral, 25%. Policy tools, so on and so forth. Those are all the reasons central banks are buying gold. How relevant are the factors to buying gold? Long-term story value is the highest one at 83%. Performance during times of crisis, 83%. Effective portfolio diversifier, 78%. No default risk, 74% historical position. So the central banks are telling you these are all the reasons to hold, own gold. So if you feel like the economic situation is going to get worse for these reasons, this is why you want to own gold because that's what the central banks are doing. So to some we have so far, big drawdowns in gold and silver in the London market, maybe six to seven months away from a silver default if trends continue and the mine supply does not increase and retail is not selling silver back to these exchanges, which right now it doesn't appear to be doing. Um, silver has self-healing capabilities, which again, makes it very unique compared to any other metal in the world, which is going to make it more in demand moving forward, especially in electronics. Think about self-healing in electronics, solar, that type of thing. And if you look to gold, same thing, uh, not as enough gold really to handle the claims if, if at current drawdown rate. So we may be a few quarters away from a gold default in London. And according to the central banks, the quarter two was the highest ever quarter two on record. And the central banks are buying it for all the reasons that we do. That's the sum so far. Last is a commitment of traders. Here's silver. This is through September 10th. Remember, it's old data. They report this about a week to 10 days old. Swap dealers dropped 2,664 shorts, added some longs. So they went in that long, about 3,000 contracts. They're still more than two to one short. So they're still holding silver down, but they're going more long silver. And we've seen this the last couple of weeks. The booming banks are thinking we're going to go up in silver. And by them releasing the shorts, it actually pushes it up, it releases that short pressure because they have the highest concentration of shorts in both silver and gold. And, but it also tells you where they think it's going for the rest of the year. Same thing in gold. They released a whopping 13,000 short contracts, released their short pressure by 13,000 contracts and released their longs by 2,000. They're still about a little over five, maybe five and a half to one short on gold, but they're releasing some of that short pressure again, expecting gold to rise in price. But percentage-wise, they think silver may rise in price higher. Maybe they know what's going on in London, and maybe they know what's going on with both silver and gold, and they see what's going on with the central bank purchasing, highest gold demand uh, in quarter two in history since this has been kept, and the central banks are saying it's for all the reasons we buy the gold for basically default risk, inflation risk, and those types of things. That's going to be your gold and silver report for this week we'll get back to it next week with more of the economic report on tuesday we got a lot to report there so stay tuned to the channel it's friday y'all have fun have a great weekend i will see you next week this is rob with the freedom report